All right. Uh, well, before we do anything else, let's just say get the legal mumble jumble out of the way. <laughs> or adults, by adults who don't act like adults. If you're under 13, get out of here. <laughs> See ya, what wanna be ya? <laughs> and I'm dating the last cert right now. In the meantime, uh uh quick programming note. Um next week's module will be our usual Sunday module. Yay! It's been a while since and, we... and uh also Chris and Andrea won't be coming in today. They're having a little technical difficulties up at the lake house so having said that I'm going to run their characters uh, let me save the search I think it's right. hotter than that they, they, they are ready to go and so Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another day of Living City of Ravensbrough. Hooray! Yay! Yay! You know, the Japanese, the Japanese bluff, bro. Uh, today's module, LCRB HL-111, the first the first link it is the beginning of the Chains That Bind series written by the late great Rick Brill. And of course um, let me copy and paste the blurbage into the window here. Not everything that happens in the city of Ravens is plainly visible. Heinous crimes can always be found if one looks hard enough. But the motivations for these acts may be disturbing to, to some, and the solutions to the problems are never as easy as we would like. An adventure recommended for characters level 17 through 20 and this is a night approved adventure. All right. Um, and even though it is midsummer. This evening, and it is evening, it is actually somewhat brisk. In fact, it is a cold and windy night in the city of Ravens. Hmm. Those that uh, are informed in such things might say that this is Kalos the Stone Lord doing his wrath. Other might call this a warning from the almost forgotten god Hor, the Lord of Three Thunders. Those who know what to look for may see his retribution, his point justice, and his revenge on its way. Yeah. Either prediction may be correct for both lightning and thunder flash on the distant horizon, promising a storm of some size to embrace the vast. Nice. Uh, this is a night most folk avoid, seeking shelter in the company of friends or family. Shadows tend to flee once one is surrounded with familiar faces, without drink, dirty walls, and a warm fire. The comfort of home and closeness of boon companions or time with a loved one each is a sensible goal this uncomfortable night. And we are all together. Hey, nice, nice. Nice. We are, we are seated at a round table, a large round table, at the Sleepy Dwarf Tavern. Uh, of course. <laughs> of course. It is currently three hours after sunset. Um, 
Why are we here? Well, we each decided to come here at the be at the bidding of yet another message asking for help. <sighs> apparently, apparently, this employer found others more suited to his or her needs, for they never uh, bothered to show. As is often the case in these matters, you will find yourself seated with your adventuring companions. Of course, barmaid will take food and drink orders. Um, and we have a nice, calm, um, e no, evening in the bar with food and drink <laughs> being plentiful. And finally, when we've eaten and drunk our fill, we, um, this pretty much is time to go, so we head outside. Yeah, into the, in the rain and the cold, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, your group finds itself heading in the same general direction, so you walk together for a short bit before saying goodbyes. The cold wind is evident even through clothing wrapped tight to ward off the crisp air. Small bits of refuse and garbage rolled down the street in the whipping wind. Dimly lit at best, your surroundings are unpleasant and the darkness of the night dampens the illumination on the streets. You pass by an alley and are about to continue on when something makes you pause. A sound, a noise, maybe a scream comes from somewhere down that way. Through the swirling air currents, it is impossible to tell if the sound is a muffled moan, a yell of anger, or a cry for help. Neither can the distance be determined, but you are certain it's a voice of some sort. The alley you believe the sound coming from is dark, utterly and completely dark to the normal eye. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Pull out the sword. It's a plus five. It sheds light. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you head down the alleyway? Oh, yeah. sure. Okay. You know, we're curious. <laughs> Heading down the alleyway, suddenly and quietly, a bedraggled and bloodied man stumbles into your view. His clothing is worn and dirty, filthy from neglect or abuse. His feet are bare, and he holds his hands close to his chest as he stumbles in your direction. His face is dirty and unshaven. His brownish blonde hair is matted to his head. Your initial thought is that this is a scared and wild man when driven to the edge of insanity. Fear and pain are plainly evident in the way he holds his thin body and in the wild look of his brown eyes. The, flate, the faint flicker of hope seems to cross his face when he realizes he has found someone. He moves towards your group. What do you do? Alright. Well, this uh, gentleman does seem to be in distress there, so I will go ahead and uh, approach him. Okay. The apparently tormented man glances over his shoulder, seemingly expecting someone or something to be following him. He then collapses in an exhausted heap. Grapes and bruises are visible, uh, apparent, uh, visibly apparent on his feet, legs, and arms. A nasty cut and bruise covers the left side of his forehead. Fresh blood trickles from these cuts and scrapes, and your impression is that the man has just gone through a terrible ordeal. Yeah, or he, uh... That's what it sounds like. As he falls, well, hold on. As he falls, his lips move and you straighten to hear the almost unintelligible words. He seems to be lost in a fit. 
sort of a dream state, mumbling uncontrollably. No more hurt. Why? It's alright, it's alright. Work here. No, no more chains. No more. Why did they drown them? Why? Don't. No more hits. He finally ceases. Um, his ramblings, but he's obviously still in pain, both mental and physical. Uh, make me a quick heal check, Dennis, and uh, I you know. I can do that for you here. One second. All right, thirty-five looks good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. The man is actually in pretty good physical condition, appearing to have at least a fairly sufficient diet. He is a naturally thin man that's not emaciated by any means. <laughs> Rick, Rick spelled it emancipated. <laughs> no, emaciated means he's been starved and going, yeah. not going to the bathroom. <laughs> I'll put it that way. He is. Uh, pretty beat up in that it looks like he's gotten into a scrap or a fight there are bruises on his wrist and ankles as well as faint ones around his neck and clutched in his right palm is a small thin piece of metal Trelana yes you can recognize what that is it's a lot bigger some type. Yeah. Uh, he's wearing a woolen shirt and trouser, while quite ragged and worn are also pretty thick and warm. Um, he is a regular looking human male of about 20 years. Um, right now he cannot speak intelligently at all and will only respond to soothing sounds or a, care, or a caring touch with incoherent syllables or yeah. words like cold, pain, dark, hurt. Yeah, um, yeah, I will take care of that there. Yeah. Um, okay. Give me one more heal, Jack Dennis. One more, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, Very you much. got that. Um, He's uh, probably undergone some great trauma. And <laughs> oh, and he's either going to need either weeks of rest or a heal spell. Yeah, well, one heal spell coming right up. Okay. We don't believe in waiting. Okay. Uh, um. Can, can, can you take me somewhere warm and dry? Yes, well... Of course we will. Uh, yeah, take her back. Take him back to my place. Okay. Looks like it's uh, pretty close by. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Your party prepares to leave towards Sakura's place when you hear a dull thud on the stone wall of the building behind you. Turning, you see a long, thin arrow protruding from the wall four feet off the ground. There is an off-white stripe attached to the shaft of the arrow. Message for you, sir. Mm-hmm. Message for you, sir. 
There. Uh, Talana, you wanna see what that's all about, or? Of course. Okay. The arrow appears to be made completely from stone, a dull gray color. The entire thing seems to be carved from a single piece of stone. The fletchings and possibly thin. Uh, it has sunk at least six inches into the wall. Wrapped around the shaft of the arrow is a piece of parchment. As, um, are you grabbing the arrow, Carolina? Of course. Okay, as soon as you touch it, it crumbles into a thin, fine dust, of course, leaving the parchment to fall right into your hands. Written in common on the piece of parchment is only one word. Peace. Peace? Mm -hmm. Peace. Hmm. Uh, looking around the area, a search for the owner of the strange arrow reveals an odd sight. It is roughly three to four feet tall. Unseen not until now, you spot the short and stocky figure perched on the edge of a building overlooking the street you stand on. You immediately recognize this as a special gargoyle. It's not so much the appearance of the statue that tells you this, it's not the impossibly detailed shape of the figure as shown by the flashing lightning behind it, nor, does it, nor is it even the large folded wings over the numerous hands. The thick compound bow, complete with notched arrow grasp and one stone and claw, leaves little doubt what forced the arrow so deeply into the stone wall. But even this does not make you think that the form is more than a piece of finely worked stone. It is a bright silver gray light shining from each eye that tells you that this is more than a simple statue, more than a creature you've heard of in legend or face in battle. Yet the creature does not leap to attack, nor does it seem nervous, so for it sits completely still looking down at your group. You would estimate the creature to be between three and four feet tall. And it's looking at you. What is it you want? It motions towards the parchment. I don't exactly. The parchment's only got one word on it. Mm hmm. Well, how do you expect us to have peace if you're uh, shooting an arrow our direction? Exactly. That's, that's not exactly a peaceful way of delivering the message. Yeah. Greetings, Ravanians. I bring words from a concerned master, one that seeks to alert you to some crimes that have been happening in your city, happening for a long time. Things that should not be happening to honest folk are happening. Good people from the whole of Sea of Fallen Stars <coughs> are being unjustly treated. This poor wreck. <coughs> Hold on for a second, guys. I'm going to get a drink of water. Be okay. right back. Okay, babe. Excuse me.
<sighs> okay. Um, good people from the whole of the Sea of Fault and Stars are being unjustly treated. This poor wretch is an example. Do the heroes wish to know more? Of course. We're listening. Excellent. Then listen, oh for the winds of the sangry night will cover a meeting for only a short time. Not enough to answer questions. Ravensbluff is a convenient town. It suits the purpose for powers that have more to be concerned with. If you wish to aid the way of life for many folks, and harm that of the manipulative and greedy, find the place of storage. But be careful, for the workings of these powers is not easy to defeat by wit or by wrath. When you are ready to begin the search, launch this into the night sky. The goggle reaches beneath the wing and drops a single shiny black arrow. The shaft falls swift and straight, stopping only when it embeds itself in the cobblestones near your feet. You notice that the arrow is perfectly straight down. This one also seems to be made of some strange stone. It will lead you to a ruse, one needing to be uncovered to stop the flow of unjustly spilled blood to stop the destruction of lives. Be careful, for even now your actions are known at least a bit. You will certainly be watched, watched by those wishing harm and those offering aid. Take the suffering soul, make him comfortable, ease his pain. And with that, the creature suddenly leaps into the air, flying impossibly fast and impossibly quiet. The night quickly swallows the figure and you are left with your companions, the bedraggled man, and the gusting winds. Well, looks like we've got a... We've got a bit of a mystery on our hands here. Yeah, we do. Yeah, but first things first, let's... Get this guy to your place. Yeah. He'll be already there. So you head back to uh We're heading to Sakura's. Okay. Because yeah. we want to get this guy nice and comfortable. That is the general plan right now. Yeah. Okay. Now, Sakura, you being a very higher up uh, at the Temple of Mistra, mm -hmm. would it be possible for you to have an acolyte uh, serving at your domicile? I'm sure we could probably arrange one, sure. Okay. Well, let's face it. You so one one very young acolyte occasionally comes by and cleans your place up, and he is there when you get back. Yeah. <laughs> and and he goes, "Oh, what happened to him?" And let's get him up to one of the rooms here. Okay. Go go up and uh, get to you know to take him up to one of the rooms. He goes. I have an idea. Uh, permission to leave the house and uh, go grab someone? Yeah, of course. All right. So he heads out, and slowly but surely, the guy is starting to come around. And about 20 or 30 minutes after leaving, the young acolyte returns, however, 
this time he's accompanied by another priest. Yes. This man, this man is much older, but wears the simple gray robes and the red skull cap of a pain bearer of the El Mater. Hmm. An interesting choice, there, to say the least. Yeah. Well, Very interesting. If, if the guy's in pain, El Materites take away pain. Yeah, they take it into themselves, do they not? Mm -hmm. uh, the pain bearer is a kind, has a kind and serious face with amazingly light eyes. Compassion and caring radiates from this man as he speaks. Good evening, my friends. I, I am Father Andres, a little mother. Yes. Uh, I, I thank you for bringing this suffering soul to your, um, what, to your beautiful home. I am concerned for him. He seems to have endured much. Please tell me who are, uh, well, we know who you are. <laughs> Yeah. You're Black Man's Angels. Yes, we are. Um, I would like to examine this man more closely, if it, you know, with your permission. Of course, of course. Yes. Okay. With that, he bends to the bed and begins examining the injured man. The young acolyte slides a stool behind the elderly priest who promptly sits. Andres motions for the acolyte to move closer. Um, whispers to him, and the young priest quickly bows in return, then turns and leaves. Um, okay. He, um, is examining the young man. By the way, the youngest man's name is Kylan. K-Y-L-A-N. Okay. Okay. He's examining the bruises and injuries, nodding slightly now and then. Um, okay. And finally, the heal of the healing effect of Dense's heal spell takes effect. Um, he begins to speak and he will first thank you. Thank you for healing me. I, not literally, but I've been through hell. Well, we could tell. Um, let me just um, tell you about myself. Uh, I am an entertainer, um, making a living doing odd jobs and such like I'm really, originally from Westgate. Uh, in an attempt to uh, get some coin, I unwittingly ran afoul of a few men, the type of men better left alone. Mm -hmm. um, I zigged when I should have zagged. And I was captured by a group of men who clapped me in chains, put a collar around my neck, and loaded me onto a ship with others, uh, others also in chains and collars. Slavers. Uh, Bastards. And we were brought here to Raven's Bluff. Now, Dennis, as a knight... Yeah, this is no uh, questions asked. We're going after De this, guys. De Declan uh, knows this as well, so does Aurelia. Slavery is illegal Yep. Mm -hmm. in Raven's Bluff. Yep, yeah. we're going after these bastards. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Before you guys ran into him, he escaped from a storage point here in the city. 
Um, when he was initially captured, he had the sense to hide a lock pick, and by this time, I won't tell you where he hid it. Mm. Uh, I don't think I want to know. Okay. Uh, do I really want to know? No. Okay. Uh, his absence did not remain undetected, and his captors were quickly on his trail. He fled wild and frantic, running blindly down dark and unknown streets until he ran into you guys. Uh, he has no idea where he is right now. He's never been to Raven's Club before. Honestly, has no clue on how he will get home. Yeah, um, okay. Pretty much, um, you guys are all of the opinion that it's time to kill some slavers. Oh, it's oh yeah. It is. It's time to have some fun. And the robot goes, I know it's not, you know, legal in the city to do so. But these slavers will be joining my undead horde. Yeah, I just you know what? For Only one, after I kill them. We kill them first, then you can do whatever. Yeah, we kill them first, and then they are going to be undead slaves for the rest of eternity. Well, you know I have no problem killing them. Yeah. I do love murder after all. Okay. So, uh, it's time to start looking for where the slavers are, which means we have to shoot an arrow into the sky. <laughs> which means that would be me. Or Declan. Or me. Or uh, Rova. <laughs> uh, definitely not Rova. I don't think he can use a bow. No, he can't. He can use a crossbow, but... All right. Well, trying to find a stone arrow into the night sky raven's bluff is not something most people, even the outlandish adventure community, should do lightly. A person could, could be easily killed or injured by such a thing, and such would be heavy on most people's con conscience. However, that's exactly what you find yourselves doing at this time. You may be taking precautions, making sure to aim very high or very low, trusting or hoping to some hidden magic flare slice in this stone arrow. When, you, when who, who, I guess, uh, Sakura's letting loose or... I'll let Declan do it there because he knows what he's doing with the bow. When Declan finally lets fly, that's also exactly what happens. The arrow leaps from the rest of the bow, immediately changing direction, flying high to the air, streaking south. Trailing behind is a thin line, thin bright line of dull blue white energy. Uh, the arrow is almost immediately lost from sight, but the light of the line of light remains. What the? In interestingly, it slowly sinks to the ground. The line ignores the gusting winds as it descends to the streets below. The, not, the line never dissipates, it never wavers, instead holding its bright shape while stretching behind the path of the arrow. So pretty much, hey, we got a path to follow. Yep, let's do it. Yep. Du, 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 okay. du, 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 du. You easily follow this strange path where the string of light has fallen completely to the ground, having won its way between the buildings. Not knowing how far it will go, but knowing 
It likely leads to dangerous people. You remain cautious. I take it weapons are out. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. The streets, the streets remain empty, but for a few rugged souls who have purpose in their steps but seem ignorant of the line of light leading you to the city. The strange light twists and turns occasionally, accommodating your need to go around buildings. You finally around the corner and see that the trail leads to a medium-sized building. The light goes to the, straight to the door of the building. Uh, as you take a better look at the structure, noting the dim light behind the shade of a window, the mystical light, light guiding you dims then fades completely. Pretty much it basically functions like a find the path spell. Nice. Okay. All right, I'm gonna use the restroom real quick. I'll be right back. Go for it. Right. Quick, quick couple minute break. I'll be right back as well. Yeah, I gotta go too. I'll be right back. Exactly what's got me yawning. I had chicken tenders, mashed potatoes, steak fingers, and corn for lunch. <laughs> Get 
that bitch kept the bus in and said forty. Sounds like Dennis is back. <laughs> I've been back. So we're all together again. Let's get yep. going. Yeah, let's <laughs> smash it. And the cute murder machine wants to have some fun. Oh, this will not be fun. For them, at least. <laughs> not for them. Because cute murder machine loves murder. Remember that. Mm-hmm. Okay. You go inside, correct? Ready yes. To yep. Kill some stuff. Unfortunately, you don't find any slaves or slavers in here. Huh. You do, however, find a lot of um, paperwork and some stuff that has actually uh, probably been illegally obtained that you guys can probably steal from the stealers and get some gold for it. Okay. Sounds good to me. Um, let's see, the building is owned and operated, according to the paperwork, by a follower of Joaquin, actually a golden eye of that goddess, but one that may be quickly free from her favor. Uh, it seems to be a warehouse of sorts, Strong check it appears to have only one floor, although a tall ceiling, more like a storage building or a barn. Um, the priest's name is Judaya, J E D D I A. Um, pretty much you find his diary. Um, definitely no longer a peaceful or an innocent man. Once a simple motion of glass or furniture, he's been recently been swayed to more shady dealings. Uh, a few months ago, he was convinced to partake in some more profitable ventures, not fully knowing what was involved. He knew things were not necessarily on the up and up, but he still went along. And he decided it was better to increase the commerce of the area and further his goddess's teachings. Instead of spreading a few pesky laws getting away of some very profitable business. When he learned that it was slavery he was getting into, he was shocked and scared. Knowing what type of people slavery generally were, he was too afraid to just pull out. Then they had future business plan with him. When he tried to find excuses to end his relationship, um, he was similarly and pointedly assured that 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 was an idea that could prove ultimately unhealthy. Uh, according to his journalist, since that point, he's lived a tortured existence, torn between what he knows is wrong and attempts to justify the huge profits and the borderline teachings of his goddess. Uh, he simply doesn't have the moral fortitude to stand up to his fears and face the implications of his actions. <laughs> well, we need to... um, upon discovering that one of his slaves was missing, Judea apparently panicked. He sent the men provided to aid in the transportation of slaves to retrieve the fugitives. Um, suspecting his time may have ended in the city of Ravens. Knowing that those pesky adventurers are everywhere. We usually are. He, apparently he had the remaining men prepare for immediately, immediate and speedy departure from the city. Um, it's empty of slaves, but does retain other bits of proof to the real purpose of this place. Uh, pretty much got three rooms, the front and main entrance room, the office, and the majority of the building is one large affair. Um, 
which pretty much contains the furniture and glassware used to foot the operation. Uh, I will tell you right now, uh, there is about 12,000 gold pieces worth of furniture and glassware. Yeah, it's well old. Put them in the bag of holding! Okay. <laughs> yep. Um... Okay. Finally, there's the hidden evidence of slave operations. You're doing that other... no. Of the previous inventory, most of that is stacked and spread across the floor. Um. And if I like this better, well, I know you will like it. Yeah, but keep that up. Use it every. Day. Yes, I know. Every. Day. I know. There are um, in searching the place, you find eight trap doors. Ooh. Ooh. Beneath each of the trap doors, and each, between each, beneath each, is a small dirt pit. Roughly 10 feet deep, 6 by 6, packed in solid dirt or stone. Um, in each of the, uh, each of the, uh, pits, um, the floor of each pit is solid stone, probably that of the sewer system. Sunk into the stone are large and sturdy eye screws. Sets of relatively short chains are attached to each rings, and manacles are attached to those chains. You found the safe pit. Now the question is, have we found the slaves, though? No, so far, no. Um, okay. Now we're finding the uh, evidence there, but just not the folks we're supposed to just find. Just not what we're looking um, for. <laughs> the um, priest of Romada know what's going on? Yeah. Have him help out on this one. Okay. Uh, the priest of Romada actually has brought in a watch captain to help deal with the situation. Uh, actually, a lieutenant. Lieutenant Cantos. Um, Kantos will recommend that you guys get some shut eye while he sets out to work, noticing if uh, many members of the watch have those any wagons. Who says I want to get shut eye? I want to kill somebody. Right. <laughs> Well, we gotta find those somebody's first. Yep. Actually, can anybody cast find the path? Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I do have that spell available. Uh, Could use some location, but that requires an object of some sort. We don't have that yet. Um, let me see. Find a path. Find a path. Find a path. Where are you? Find a path. Are you saying uh, we're about to pathfinder? Uh, let's see. It's cleric mm -hmm. Oracle Six. I don't have it in memory, but I can, if we get a night's rest there, I could uh, 
pick it up in the morning. All right. Because we okay. have to move, so we can do it. Find the path to to Gaia. Yeah. Let's. Yep. So, uh, the next morning, yeah. the next morning I will cast that find the path spell, and hopefully it will take us to where we need to go. Hopefully. Okay. And the find the path spell actually leads north out of the city. Hey, guess what? We're no longer in Raven's Club. <laughs> Which means that can get away with making his undead horde if he wants. Okay. All right. Uh, so we head north. Um, let's see. Uh, you know that they're probably in a heavy wagon. Which means so. So we need a survival check. Um, uh, yep. Probably Declan in that case, then. And if you've got access to his, uh... Yeah, chances. I do. Oh, Mad 20 on it, yeah. Very yeah. nice. Okay. Well, if we uh, take up our, um, our the, 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 you head north along the road for about three or four hours, and then you see that the wagon tracks leave the main road, and for the, and, and um, as you continue on, for the first time since leaving the main road you encounter something that may be relevant. Um, you pause at the top of a tall rise, taking advantage of an excellent vantage point, ahead and below, close to a mile off and barely seen in the valley filled with trees, you spot a few buildings. Apparently a small farmstead, the place looks quite abandoned and in uh, excuse me, oh. general disrepair. <laughs> Bravo, babe. A large barn, a few sheds, and a house can be seen in a large open yard. Uh, nothing moves in the valley, and no sign of a wagon is available, other than what you found to this point in the trail. All right. Uh, Morova is going airborne. Of course he is. And... Declan is going to make another survival check. Oh yeah. And those wagon tracks you've been following mm -hmm. lead right up to the barn. Yeah. see something, he's well up in the air, and up in a tree, a few hundred yards to the left of the trail, there's a guy 
hidden it you know pretty much sitting in the in a big oak tree So, what would we like to do the, to the guy up in the tree? Well... I can shoot him in the butt with an arrow. No, don't do that just yet. We can convince him words. Well, we are flying air, so yeah, this is a... Actually... I'm gonna see if... I know this is Morova, not Morova's strong suit. But... Yeah, he can actually maneuver himself around Pretty much, uh, up to within about, I believe it's about 30 feet behind the guy. Okay. Yeah. when he's drawn to. <laughs> up to the rift and looks out behind the barn and sees one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, six guys were each wearing holy symbols. And what sort of holy symbol would that be? Well, Morova will tell you in a second. Is that Nick I'm hearing in the background, babe? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, look at that. Nat 20. Damn. It is a holy symbol of Gargalf. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, I'll show you what he sees. I'll show you what he sees, okay? Okay. Okay, these POGs are the Gargalf guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Bill here is definitely looking very roguish. And Sildar does have a holy symbol around his neck, but uh, he does not have any armor on. Easy kill. So you think? Um, I'll I'll start us right here where we're at. Uh, but I'm going to give you guys a surprise round. I'm going first. Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> We got Tolana, Bill, Sakura, the POD. Okay. Here we go. Oh, ow. I had to get my banana. Ooh, look at her really with the net 20. Ooh. Ooh, nice. going next week. <laughs> oh! And we're over going fast. Okay. Turn on it. Yep. You are going first. Let me see something. Guess what? He's in range for me to shoot an arrow. You better yet. He's in range for you to charge. Ooh, I like it. So, you can go ahead and attack once with your weapon. Uh, you're getting sneaky dice, so, um, guess what? I would use the Crimson Lady, yeah. AC 31 for a total of 64 hit points. Yeah. He's pretty much gone. No, he's still up. These guys got hit points. Bill's like, huh? Aurelia <laughs> will charge up as well. Single attack. For 26 points of damage. <laughs> okay, then 
5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, this is gonna fucking hurt. Well, Marilla was gonna weaken them for you guys. The cutoff line will be this guy right here between them and Marilla. But, yeah, they're all gonna get hit and hurt badly. DC on this one is too higher because it is a necromancy spell. Okay. Damn it. Anybody, okay. got, any, anybody got a straw? <laughs> we have just sucked one year out of your life. Alright, so DC would be 29. Fortitude saves. Wow, that guy fucking made it. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so, thirty one, if you make the save. Failed it. Oh, that guy made it. Man, they got some decent saves, it looks like. Oh, yeah, these guys are decently high level. That guy, and this is not going all that well. However, this guy will need a 20 to make it. And, oh, he, it. and he is hurt badly. And he failed. Yep. Oh my. He failed and he dies. That was the big one. That was the 11th level mage, 11th level priest of Gargals. Oh. Sufficiently beefy, in other words. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sakura. Yes, and yes, I have a new toy to play with today here. So I'm going to move up to Mura over there. You know, I'm going to point Bill out, and uh, I'm going to say, um, you know, you know, sucking them dry is pretty good there, but um, I prefer to do this the easy way. Hey, I just point to Bill and I say, die. So, uh, yeah, uh, how about a, a DC 30 fortitude save? On um, which one? On Bill. You really did not need to do that. Um... No, that's called sending a message. <laughs> it's called sending a long message. <laughs> or a very short one. Boom. <laughs> 
Yeah. And, He's dead. Okay. I, okay. How do I best explain this? Um, do you remember in the Watchmen movie what happens to Rorschach at the end? No, I haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, he just imploded. And so, yeah, and I have that spell up for a while. Okay. Uh, and let's see here. Is she what? 19. Okay. Uh, the shock will not go through. They have protection from electricity up. But, we'll just do this right here. We'll start with 11. I'm going to start with 21. Okay. And then on the second attack, he dies. The third attack hit 9, 10, 14. The fourth attack hit for well, for eighteen. The rapid shot hit for eleven and twelve is twenty three. And the hasted shot missed. Natural one. Yeah. The POGs are like, huh? And then Kira will come up. DC 27, this is a reflex save. Yep. And this is actually their worst save. Ah, but that guy made it, so he will take... So he'll take 25. And he's not on fire. This guy will not make it. He'll take 50. And he is on fire. That guy failed. On fire. That, that guy m made it. Not on fire. And I'm at 20. Yep. <laughs> Made it not on fire. All right. Tolana? Yes, sir. I'll just let you know. 
This guy here is the more injured of the two. Actually, they're pretty much about the same. Yeah, there's like two points difference between the two of them. So I'll you take go this up, one. You get one attack. And you do 12 points to him. Okay. Aurelia will come over here. Single attack. Hey, and will and will crit. Uh, so this guy is now dead. going to cast two spells. Strike this guy for fifty one. And he needs to make a reflex save. Yep. That's a fail. Yep. Looking at the DC, yeah. Still up, but he's, he's almost a hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and then Side of freezing sphere. Uh, breathing sphere is a reflex. Okay. He's gone. He's gone. And now the saves have to be made. He's hurt. Yeah. 
here and that's me, okay? Oh, uh, uh, he fucking made it. All right. Sakura, you're up. Okay, well, let's take a look, see what we got here. We've only got two left. It's within 70 feet of me. Yep. So, yeah, second round, I'll uh, continue concentrating on the implosion and uh, just a. Uh, you know, let's see. We'll just make uh, this one. This, this guy's got the more hit points. Yeah, go ahead and implode him. All right, he needs to make what? Fortitude? Uh, fortitude, yes. DC 30. Eight. Nope. Fail. Yep, so he takes 180 points of damage. Oh, yeah, he... He's goes, pretty much dead. <laughs> he goes boom. And I look to the other one, combat banter. Um, run. And then Declan. I'm the last guy. Once again, the uh, shock does not work, but everything else does. This guy has... Okay. Hit, 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 hit. Um, hit and hit, okay. I'm not gonna bother adding it up. He had uh, 28 hit points left. So he was actually gone with the first one, I think. No, probably second arrow. Yeah. Um, let's see, 13, 13 15, 15, 17, 17. 27, yeah. So by the second attack, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hundred and forty four hit points each of those guys. <sighs> Dang. Beefy. Bill was an eleventh level thief and Sildar was an eleventh level mage eleventh level priest of Gargals. Okay. We search the area. The barn uh, is exactly as it should be, dry, neat, relatively unused. However, in-depth search reveals many more sinister details. Uh, clever pits in the floor. Uh, inside the barn is the wagon. Um, huge, with a large and secure carriage area, large enough to hold at least eight adults. Um, You'll find the horses. Uh, you find about 16,000 gold pieces and gems and coins. Oh, hello. And of course, you know, you find the pits. Guess what? There are slaves in the pits. Oh, excellent. from Raven's Bluff. All of them came from cities on or close to the Sea of Fallen Stars. Um, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. Uh, you bring the slaves back to the city. And your return to the city is taken as a good thing. Once reaching the north gate and being allowed passage in the city, a detachment of the watch accompanies you to ease the travels and avoid any hassles. 
the hassles come in many forms and you do not think anyone is prepared for the group that is blocking your passage as you round the corner. Standing in the middle of the street is a large detachment of people that is plainly from Fay. Oh. oh crap. Dressed in the colors of their guard, a full score of men are spread out in a military formation, weapon sheaths standing at the ready. The posture of the men screams that they are ready to take action. Each appears to be a veteran of a good number of battles, having weapons and armor that are both attractive and worn. Mm -hmm. But it is the figure standing behind the middle of the formation that is most clearly informs you that this detachment is loyal to the nation of Thay. Two standard bearers stand in the middle of the group. One of them with a massive flag resplendent with a gold inlaid standard of Thay on a pole made of solid silver. The other uh, holds a standard that is bright red, decorated with the symbol of Kozuth, the elemental lord of fire. But these are not the things that draw the most attention. Fully seven feet tall, the striking figure of High Autark, Blaze Methalanir, Red Wizard and advisor to Belakura, the deputy ambassador of Thayer to Ravensbluff, uh, pretty much he uh. speaks in a booming voice. In the name of the great empire of Thay, I demand you release these prisoners into my custody immediately. They are wanted for crimes against Thay, and we shall have oh, a punishment executed upon them. The I feel it's like coming on. <laughs> the slaves themselves are also the property of Thay now. To pay for damages, to the reputation of my country. Do not creating an incident here uh, that will be very damaging to your city's relations with the Red Wizards. Hand them over, and I will not hold hold this incident against this burg you call a city. Okay, ah, all the people are moving up the street. They know that this is going to get fugly. Yeah, this is going to get, get really quickly. quickly, really quickly. <laughs> Especially if I have anything to do about it. Well, they Damn. were being he held uh, unlawfully against the uh, standing uh, laws of the city. <laughs> Bless you. Hold on. Looks like they might. Let's see. Where is... Oh, there. There's the curl. Uh-huh. I got... I got to put your name tag on it. Okay. Um, I take it is Mr. Fuck You Man. Uh, yep. yeah. At this point, I believe that is correct. It is. Um, I really will say one thing before the shift is rolled. Looks like another black man is declaring war on Thay. <laughs> oh, nice. Very nice. That 20, baby. Aurelia going well. Marova is going uh, next week. Next week. <laughs> Declan going well. 
here are going well. The Red Guards will go on a group initiative. Figured as much because there's so many of them. Yeah, there's like 20 of them. Blaze, however, will go on his own. Blaze is going on a 15. Guard. Well, I'm going at 18. Okay. In the words of Neville Longbottom, why is it always me? Because you had the ice initiative in the party. Deal with it. <laughs> okay, the cute murder machine will go with it. <laughs> um, Sakura? Uh huh. Do you have that implosion handy one more time? Uh, not memorized there. That's only like a one round every two levels, so. Uh, but I do have other things in mind. Okay. Tolana? Yes, sir. I take it you're charging. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> attack. A single attack with sneaky dice. Fifty-four, sixty-four, sixty-six. Okay, he's hurt. He's not dead. Okay, Sakura. All right, uh, let's go ahead. Kick in the boots of speed first off, and I want to try to. You know, actually, let's do this. us right about here and then okay. I am going to cast that other wonderfully nasty spell that I do have I keep waiting for somebody to say bring me Thanos <laughs> oh I just I just did oh you didn't bring me Thanos you got it. 60 electrical, okay. Yep, so everything within 30 feet of me. Don't ask me how I knew you were going to bring me Thanos, but... Yeah. Yeah, I, I can exclude you out there, so... Yeah. Yeah. That's going to catch all the red guards. Uh, okay. DC 29. Mm-hmm. Uh, fort save? Yep. It's a fort save, baby. Okay. I'll do the red guards first. That's a miss. Okay. He's dead. Oh, he's definitely. That's a definite miss. Are they stunned if they, uh... Uh, if they fail to save, they are stunned.
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, there's a chance they can't save. Oh, goodness. Okay, that's my fault. <laughs> you know, yawning is contagious. <laughs> Ooh, he made it. God damn it. Not by much, but yeah, he did. They got roll seventeen or higher. Well, that's a nat twenty. Yeah. And a nat 20 definitely counts as higher. Ow. Crap, my back. Don't, do you see the red dots I'm putting on these guys? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, yeah, I, I, I see them. We both do, actually. Okay, good. I, just, I wasn't sure if you guys saw them or not. Yeah. The red dots mean that they're stunned. Yeah. I figured as much because they're not the first group we have ever stunned. Who's next to you on? Uh, probably me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, the guys that are you are failing, who are failing, mm -hmm. they are losing two thirds of their hit points right off the bat. Damn. spray my brother-in-law brought me used to only be available by prescription mm, yeah you told me that yeah the prescription easily cost like I think my sister said 200 bucks Jesus but now Sam's Club sells it over the counter or she said the last six pack was 25 bucks say is that since I did the nose spray this afternoon, I've only sneezed one time. So I think I found a new way to combat the stupid allergies.
Oh my god, I'm hoping you get blaze. Okay, so out of the red guards, only two made this save. Okay. And they're all still alive, which is actually kind of a good thing at the moment. Which means there might still be a chance we can uh, resolve this. Yep. Oh, crikey. Blaze is probably going to make his fucking save. This guy's beef. Major beef. To DC? Uh, he made it dead off. Actually, he's out of range, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's 35 feet. I mean, the uh, radius for uh, storm bolts is uh, 30. 30. Okay, so, so he yeah. didn't even need to make the save. Nope. Okay. However. No matter how subtle the wizard. I just put these new batteries in this fucking mouse and it's acting like the fucking... It's acting like a big baby? It's acting like a piece of shit. <laughs> All right. No matter how subtle the wizard. Six arrows in the government. With the really Krampus style. Yeah. Usually does that. Yeah. Okay. He's got resist energy acid up. Taking off the corrosive damage. Yeah. So, let's start off with 19. Let's start off with, and we would do another 19. That's 38. Yep. Third attack will be 22. That would be... Uh, it's up to 60. 60. The fourth attack missed. The rapid shot hit and critted. 9, 11, 12, 32, 38. And this haste attack hit. Quite a bit of damage he took. Well, he took 112 points of damage. And he's still standing? Guy's beef. (laughs) 
Let's see what Aurelia decides to do. First two arrows, Lays dies. Wow, he actually drop dropped? Drop dropped. He went plop plop without the fizz fizz. <laughs> uh, however, he did have a chain contingency on. Yeah, I probably just. Teleports him back, probably, so he can be rezzed again. Yep. And, of course, um, when he drops, uh, he's teleported home. And everybody within 30 feet, which is not included secure because he was out of range, Gets hammered with the hard welting. For shits and giggles, guys, you already took him down two thirds. They have 30 hip. The ones with the red dots have 30 hit points left. Uh, just let's roll the damage and yeah. see if they even survive this. All right. He is an 18th level wizard, so... 18d6, so... 18th level wizard? And a 13th level priest of Kozuth. Oh, jeez. Oh, brother. Okay. Oh, sister. So, 18 die 6. Six and five. Yeah, they don't survive it. Okay, now I just need to double check these last two guys. Well, those last two probably will survive. Maybe. The DC is 26. He made it. And he did. He made it. Uh, but they will give themselves up. Good choice. Very good choice. Because the other 17 people or 16 people died. Unfortunately, that does leave us a bit of a conundrum, considering we just 
quite a conundrum. You guys did create a little bit of an international incident. Yeah. <laughs> not, it not. was a well deserved international incident, don't you think? However, yeah, they didn't give us a choice. I mean, we can't the, stand with, down. With all of the other things that have been happening, uh, the courts will look at it this way. Hey. Outside of the embassy of Bay in Raven's Bluff, slavery is illegal. That's right. And they were... They were not on Davian territory. They were in Raven's Bluff territory. Therefore, they were not slaves. That's right. Yeah. And if you really wanted to say that these guys were wanted criminals... Well, then, you know what? We would have to have a court hearing. Well, but you were, of course, being such a dickhead. What? Oh, us? No, no. Who no, are you no. calling a dickhead? Oh, Blaze. <laughs> Blaze. Uh, because he said, he, you no, know, he went back to say he got resurrected. Uh, he pretty much, uh, ditched up the mirror, and here's what the mirror told him. Number one, slavery is not legal in the, in the Reagan's West. It might be legal in Xavier territory. Um, but not in Raven's Well, Number two, um, Um, you were not in Davian territory when you made your demands. Uh, yep. We depended number, on number three. I really a black man who declared war on you guys. <laughs> oh, she would. Oh, she would. She's just like her dad. I was gonna say proof. She is definitely Quincy's daughter. And we sure as hell are not going to piss off the Lord of the Fire Dials. So needless to say, do you and the undead horse you rode on on? Yep. Okay. Now, having said that, let's do the search, shall we? Mm -hmm. Yes. There are some things that will probably be sold. There are some things that more than likely will be party treasured. The first thing that will probably be sold, since we have no monk in the party, is the monk's sash of resistance plus two. Yeah, sell that, please. Yeah, sell it. Okay. The next item, which I'm thinking might be party treasured, is a scroll of clear audience. Mm, yeah, we could party treasure yeah. that. That's fine. I'd say PT that. Ow. Stupid back every time I move. <laughs> Okay, I just turned on the lamp and I was looking straight at it. Oh, oh bright light, bright light. Okay, Mugwai. Hey, I'm your little Mugwai. You know that. <laughs> God damn it, piece of shit mouse. When I get paid next week, I may be actually going out and buying a big thing of batteries. 
I've been lucky so far. I haven't had to replace the batteries in either of my mice. So, we're good. <laughs> now, the television remote in the bedroom, yeah, I had to do that recently. Ow, ow. <laughs> Into the closet I go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Closet, I come. Ooh. Oh my. <laughs> Not like that. No, come on. So you know me better. I'm, I'm teasing, Terry. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, also, squirrel clairvoyance. Yes. Last page one, so party treasure did things. I'm thinking party treasure on all three of these certs. They are all potions of invisibility. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Back to the closet. <laughs> Arrows at the um, uh, gargoyle shot at the beginning of the module. Uh huh. There are 20 of them. They are magical plus two arrows. I'm thinking Declan. Yeah, yeah. Def That's a Declan thing. Definitely. Suit of Elven Chain plus two. Yeah. Sell it? Yeah, I'll sell it. Yeah. Okay. Sakura's getting a crown of heaven. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I'll be right back. Now we all are going to be getting a sir a favor and enmity, and we're gonna be getting the first one. Uh the first one will be the favor of Karen Mistamir. Uh and the enmity of Blaze Metalnir. Just 
put your guys' names on the says before I send them. Okay. Okay, babe. There is a horn of warning. This horn is beautifully crafted work from made from dark brown antler of an exceptionally large stag. Etched within etched with the images of a castle. Ah, uh, the surrounding countryside of mountain warriors, the ends are trimmed with gold. The gold stones are molded and tapered down to patterns of oak leaves that blend into the horn itself. When blown, the horn is exceptionally clear and loud, emit, emitting a sound that would inspire troops. Um, the horn holds a special power also, but when the magic of the horn is activated by command of the owner, the next three people the owner touches can hear the call as if they normally would sound as long as they were within normal hearing range. No others will hear the call of the horn. Once the power of the horn is activated, either then either after the horn is blown or the first full day the lake expires, or it will be an inactive during this period the horn must recharge. Alright, uh, who wants a horn of warning? Um, Hello? I'm kind of just not personally interested about it myself. I'm thinking of really I might want it. Yeah, she might. Okay. Because I knew I didn't want it. gets the best resistance plus five. Kira gets a wild animated buckler shield. Nice. Yes. All right. I think that's everything. That's everything. Uh, and and I will send out the golden recap. But we got a shitload of it. Um. Let me see. I'm pretty sure this was a night approved module. You said it was. Okay. You had said it was. Uh, and all the knights of squires who stood their ground would not allow Blaze to take the slaves of Sabres get one hit point. Nice. Alright guys, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, call it here. You all have a good afternoon. All right, you buddy. too. Get all some right. sleep, dude. I will. <laughs>